I often get the question, when will NVMe be ready for production? My answer has been, until we get hypervisor support, more specifically vSphere support, I don't really see any adoption in the enterprise. Well now, the wait is over. With vSphere 7, we have built-in drivers for FC NVMe, and in this demonstration, I will show you how we can seamlessly migrate a VM from a data store on a SCSI LUN to a data store on an NVMe namespace. And even more importantly, we will see the application take full benefit of NVMe and double the performance. But enough talk, let's jump into the demonstration. Here you can see my vSphere 7 host. I've provisioned an NVMe namespace and created a data store called NVMe 200. It already had a SCSI LUN backing the data store FCP 200. All I really had to do was to create the namespace on the storage array and mask it to the hypervisor. Depending on the storage array, you may need to add zoning for additional worldwide names presented by the array for access to the NVMe namespace, as in this demonstration. Let's take a quick look at the fabric. We can see from the name server that the host login to the SAN with both FCP and NVMe capability. That means that the HPA can transport SCSI and FC NVMe concurrently on the same physical port. As mentioned, the storage array in this demo use a concept of a NVMe controller with NVMe target ports which log in as NPIV behind the physical target ports. As you can see here, there are separate worldwide names for SCSI and NVMe logged in on the same physical ports, 20 to 23. And we see that both initiator and target ports are running 32 gig. Because the array used separate worldwide names for SCSI and NVMe, our ESXi host must be zoned to access both the SCSI and NVMe target ports. I use peer zoning for this, but obviously any zoning method works. Now let's go back to vSphere and take a look at the VM. We can see that its virtual disk is running on the SCSI line for data store FCP 200. And on the right, we can see that we are running a 7030 read-write workload. Now what I'm going to do is perform a storage vMotion of the virtual disk where the application is running, which we can see in the window on the right and select to move it to the NVMe data store. We start the storage remotion and as it kicks off, we can see there's a little bit of an impact on the application's performance as there always is when you start a storage remotion. And then right after, we see that performance almost doubles. I want to emphasize that I had not done anything at all to optimize for performance simply took my vSphere 7 hypervisor, provisioned an NVMe namespace to it on the storage array using the inbuilt driver in ESXi 7 and with no additional configuration at all. Having that said, the Broadcom ECD division have released a test report with Tolly where they show increase of more than 2x in performance using vSphere 7 and the same Gen 7 Emulex adapter with 32 gig optics as used in this demo. This report was released in April 2020 and is available for download on Tali's website. Before finishing this demonstration, I want to visualize the I.O. performance one more time using SandNav. In SandNav, we find the ESXi host in the inventory and select to investigate. Looking at RX and TX utilization, you can see that if we go a little bit back in time, we, that I played a bit with the storage vMotion moving the VM's application virtual disk back and forth between the SCSI data store and the NVMe data store. This concludes this demonstration, showcasing that you can seamlessly transition to use FC NVMe with vSphere concurrently with SCSI on the same ports. For more information on FCNVME, go to broadcom.com. Thanks a lot for watching.